right, Austin from Letterman Row. Why? How does, how does it feel to get um, singled out as an offensive lineman when you get those sort of player of the game honors? And I know you guys pride yourself on being a group of five, but for you to get the spotlight, what did that mean? Um, you know, it meant a lot. Uh, obviously, it meant I was doing something right. Uh, but, um, no, nah, I mean, the preparation and hard work that goes into each week for each opponent, um, especially with Coach Studd, you know, he wants nothing but the best from all of us. So, um, you know, that's one of our goals. Why not? Like, what? Because, you know, we go through these team meetings, and typically it's a skill guy, and he'll challenge us and say, why not you? So, um, you know, it wasn't just an award for me. I felt like it was kind of an award for, for the group as a whole, and um, it just added a little bit of extra juice to, to what we got going on now. So, no, it was a great feeling, though. Did you have a sense on Saturday that you were playing at that kind of level when you were out there? No, I would, see, I was just more so focused on just getting the victory and, you know, doing my part. But, no, nah, that, that didn't really pop up in my mind. Front row right, uh, Bill from the dispatch. Dwight, the, the weather forecast for Saturday just looks like it could be snow. Uh, if that's the case, probably be more of a running game. How much would that excite you? What, what's the challenge of facing their defensive line, their front seven? Um, it's definitely going to be exciting if that's the case because, um, you know, we, we love running the ball and love getting after it. But going against, <clears throat> you know, Team Up North, their defensive line, um, and just their whole defense as a whole, it's going to be another great challenge for us. But this is something that we've been preparing for even before football season during the off season. So it's just going to come down to all the hard work and preparation that we did even before the season started. It all comes down to this game now. And, um, you know, one of the few things we say in the O-line room is, is that it's going to count on us because if we're, if we're not producing, then as an offense as a whole, um, you know, it can't function. And then we're putting the defense in bad positions. So if that's the case, um, we're going to take the challenge and, and, you know, just put in the work on Saturday that we've been putting in um, this whole entire time preparing for this moment. Third row left, Dan from 11 Warriors. Wyatt, is there a moment or a memory since you've been here at Ohio State where you realize just how important this rivalry is to people? Uh, could you repeat that one more time? Is there a moment since you've arrived here at Ohio State where you realize just how important this rivalry game is to people? Yes, I'll probably say <clears throat> it was on my recruiting trip. Actually, this was even before I got here. I never understood the rivalry, but I um, was wearing like a blue tank top in the, in the facility, and um, – one of the hosts was telling me, hey, you, you, do you have a jacket or anything? you got to take that off because, you know, you're not allowed to wear blue in here. And I remember I was just kind of sitting there like, well, it's like 100 degrees during the summer, and i got to put a jacket on. But, no, I, I did. And then after, uh, I guess, word got to Coach Meyer, and uh, I had the, the jacket on, he unzipped, and he was like, unzip that. Do you, have some, do, you have, do you have that ugly color on? And I was like, yeah, he said, don't ever do that again. So then I was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, I definitely won't do that again. But, no, nah, that, that made me realize that, you know, this is, this is real. And this is, uh, you know, it's very historic, and <clears throat> we take that very serious around here. Did you know much about Ohio State and Michigan rivalry before you came here, or is that something you kind of learned once you arrived on campus? I learned once I arrived on campus, um, you know, because I grew up in California. <clears throat> Especially when I was younger, I wasn't really – you know, focus on it, but I always knew that it, you know, it was a rivalry, but I just didn't know how big it was, obviously, until I got here. So. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, front row right, Joey from the dispatch. Why, just to follow up on the about running the ball from earlier. In this game, the team that typically can run the ball better will win. I know this will be your first time starting against Michigan, um, but why do you think the team that runs the ball better has an edge in this particular game, or why is it important in this game? Um, because you, well, if you're successful running the ball, you're basically controlling the game. Because um, you know, running the ball, you're controlling the time, and especially if you have one of those drives like we did on this past Saturday coming out, where it was like a 13-play drive. I mean, that especially with how we go up tempo and run the ball, it gets the D line, gets the whole defense kind of, um, you know, out of place because you know these guys start getting tired, and so if you're able just to keep on doing that and have those long play drives, it it puts a little little pressure on the defense, so um, I would definitely agree with that. That you know, if we come out and do what we're supposed to do and dominate the running game, we we definitely have a you know a greater chance of getting the end goal that we want. Did you guys decide before that opening drive last weekend we're just going to run the ball like basically every play? No, I mean, you know, we kind of just test the waters and see what's kind of going on. I mean, we knew it was going to be a great challenge for us up front because their D line um, prior to going into that game, you know, we were studying. Um, you know, copious amounts of film on them just because they were all very talented across the board. 
and past teams haven't really had too much success besides maybe Minnesota run the ball on them. So, um, you know, we, we tested the water and we came out, we ran the ball, and we just started kind of, you know, we felt the momentum shifting. Some of their guys kind of early on were getting tired, so we just kept pounding and pounding and, you know, it was working out for us. And, and it also kind of just sends a message to, you know, the defense, like, oh, okay, these guys are coming out ready to play. So um, I'd probably would say that that's why we did it. What have you seen from Justin since Saturday, and how good was it to see him perform in a physical game like he did going into a game that you know is going to be equally, if not as more physical? Uh, no, it was great to see. I mean, I've always said he's a great leader, and he you know he definitely did take some shots this past game. That stuff that we'll, we'll definitely clean up and fix. But you know, the fact that he just was able. Uh, to just bounce right back up and to keep on going, you know, it says a lot about his toughness and his character. And you know, like, like I said, I mean, he, he's just an incredible leader. Um, and you know, that, that's the type of effort that you want in your quarterback, especially you know when it gets in those tough physical games. Not to you know shy away from getting hit. I mean, he'll sit there and he'll even take some shots and then you know complete a pass, which says a lot about him. So he, he's not afraid to take hits and. You know, going against this last uh, little stretch we got going on, we're going to be playing more tough teams with tough defenses, so uh, I'm just going to even get more physical. And how much blue clothing do you own now? Oh, I, I burned it all. Front row left. Bill, or second row left. Bill from Letterman, or from uh, the Athletic. Why? Uh, I know last year against Michigan, you had to go in at the end after Beach got hurt, but I, if I'm not mistaken, you also had to go in earlier. I think Beach might have like lost a shoe at one point, yeah. And you had to go into the game. So what was it like to get inserted to, into the Michigan game for the first time, sort of unexpectedly? Uh, it was crazy, especially you know the first when he when he lost his shoe. I remember I was just kind of just sitting there like, wait, what's going on? And Coach was like, hey, go go in. We need you to go in. So um, yeah, at first it was definitely a little nerve wracking, but um, I just got I, after that first. Little mishap that happened when I had to go back in for the second time. It was, it was fine, but just as far as the experience, I mean, it, it was like a little taste. So um, ever since that day, it just kind of made me more hungry to play in this game, just because you know it was almost like a teaser. Um, so I, I'm just looking really forward to it, and you know, even the short time I was out there, I could, I could feel it. Like you could just feel the the rivalry and. Um, uh, that's why I'm just looking forward to this game for so much. And, uh, I've asked uh, a couple of your teammates in the offensive line about this. Was just interested in your perspective. You guys have run quite a bit of outside zone runs this year. I think maybe more than we've seen from from this team in the past. Just what is it about your group up front, or or maybe even JK, that that that's a good play for you guys? Well, up front um, across the board, I feel like we're you know we're we're athletic across the board, which kind of just helps us get on those blocks and get up to the second level. But just having a back like J.K., he makes it very easy because the slightest crease that he sees, he'll just take it and, you know, it could go for 90 yards and something ridiculous like that. But I don't know, that play has just been successful for us because, you know, the preparation that we've put into that play, um, <clears throat> done a lot of reps of, of outside zone. And, um, you know, just the technique that Coach Dud teaches on that play is, I feel like it has a lot of success to why we're able to uh, run it so much. And right in front of Doug from Cleveland.com. Wyatt, does Michigan, do they run any more stunts on the defensive line than other teams? Um, what are you just talking about as far in general? Yeah. Or, I mean, they, they run a lot of stunts, but, I mean, it's, it's hard to say just because against, you know, it seems like every team that we've played up to this point has done something different um, from what we've seen on film, so... But no, I mean they definitely have their third down packages where they run stunts and twists and stuff like that. And you know we just got to prepare, get ready for any possible look that we could see. So to answer your question, it's, you know I, I could say yes, but it's going to depend more on once uh, what we see on Saturday. Just in general, what, how have you guys handled that when other teams have done that with you, making sure you guys are picking <clears> up everybody? And like, what's the key for an offensive line? You know when they're trying to maybe get a free rusher off, something like that? Um, as far as picking it up? Just making sure you guys pick it up, and how, how well do you think you've done it this year? Well, it's just like mid-game adjustments. Um, you know, there's been multiple games this year where they may have came out and ran something that we haven't seen before, and <clears throat> it's just important for us to communi communicate that to the coaches once we get back off that drive to explain what happened, what they were in, and what they did. And, 
you know, our coaches have done an excellent job of, you know, getting us out of those situations where we're not prepared. But, you know, it, there are times where it will happen in the games because, you know, they may not have shown it in, on, you know, in previous games and they could have been saving it for us. But it's just, t- it's just about a communication and getting it across to the coaches. These uh, these games where it's going to be in the 30s, it's going to be snowy. I would think that to, to really excel in that, you'd almost have to welcome that. Have you gotten to that point yet, where you know a guy growing up not playing in conditions <laughs> like that at all? Do you like look forward to that yet? I mean, it's definitely going to be a different challenge. Um, so you said growing up not facing that type of weather. You know, it was different when I first came out here. But um, I mean, yeah, you just kind of got to embrace it. I mean, it is what it is. It, it's going to. I mean, we know it's going to be cold. It's November, so. Um, I would just, you know, I, I don't think it's going to have too too much effect on me. Obviously, it's going to be a little chilly, but um, it's nothing. It's nothing that I'm really worried about. Right, Coach Day has talked about in the past. You know, you guys maybe you wear different shoes for the conditions. You practice mm-hmm. sometimes preparing for it. But is the mental side of it as important, more important than what you anything you do physically on the day of the game? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, mental preparation is key, uh, especially going into big time games and just. It really just comes down to knowing your stuff, knowing your assignments, knowing what you're supposed to do, because as long as you're confident in what you know, um, you know, the plan stuff, it kind of just feels for itself. So mental preparation, in my opinion, is probably the biggest aspect of, you know, playing well and being successful. Why, schematically speaking, how much different does this Michigan defense maybe look to you compared to last year? Um... <clears throat> I mean, they run <clears throat> some some different stuff and some similar stuff from last year. But, uh, you know, last year they, they had a really good front last year, so they were able to run a lot of different stuff. I'm not saying that they don't have a great front this year. They do. But um, I, w- I wouldn't say it's too much, but I know that they're probably going to bring bring some stuff that we haven't seen before come game day on Saturday. <clears throat> Why do you uh, – do you as a – player and you guys as a group offensive line, do y'all prefer to go against what they call like opponents, I mean, you know, talent level wise? Mm-hmm. The, what, what, do you look more forward to those kind of games to prove yourself, I guess, for one of another term? Uh, yes. Um, you know, we love those. That's why we went to Ohio State is because you, you want to play against the best. So in games like that where it comes down to, you know, just those one-on-one blocks, basically either you or him. Um, you know, it's very fun, on, and <clears throat> there's going to be a lot of games, especially now, where talent equates up front, especially because, you know, we're going to be facing more teams with really good defenses and def- defensive lines especially. So, you know, we look we look very forward to the challenge. Do and those teams tend to play you more straight <coughs> up if you follow my drift? You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I know. You understand uh, what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, everybody's got tricks. But yeah, everyone's got tricks, but. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, they'll, they'll come out sometimes in their base stuff and just kind of see how it feels that first series. And then from then on, they might come out on some different stuff if they're not able to hold up up front. Great. Wyatt, thank you very much. Yeah, no problem.